Good evening, and we call to order the Lathrop Village City Council of Monday, March the 6th. And I will ask the clerk to call a roll call, please. Mayor Garrett. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Here. Council Member Jennings. Here. Council Member Kinez. Here. Council Member Miller. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. I invite everyone that is in the audience and one person on Zoom to say the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I know that we have quite a bit of uh, agenda adjustments. So before the approval, can we um, go ahead and do all the changes that we need to do for the agenda? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, first move the closed session um, from action item F to just after the consent agenda. Uh, I'll also move to uh, change or add a new item F. Um, this would be action on the labor attorney recommendation. And then uh, the third adjustment would be uh, move the appointment to the board of review out of the consent agenda and, in, and make it a new action request G, because that should be an action request, not a con in the consent agenda. And lastly, to uh, remove the uh, ZBA uh, portion of tonight's meeting. So I have a second. Thank you before you go. So we're going to make sure just to repeat this. So move the closed session to after the consent agenda. So we're moving the closed session from Sorry item enough. number F to wait a minute. What is that? To 9.5. 9.5. Okay, I see it. So got it. So closed session is going to be moved to 9.5. What? Where's the point five? Right there, right there. No, I'm saying make it 9.5. Or what you could do since you're removing seven, you could just transfer all the numbers. Right. Thank you. Right. Makes it extra difficult. Okay. So that's the first thing that we're changing. Uh, and then uh, make a new action item F, which, okay. would, which would be action on the labor attorney recommendation. And then Okay. Then pull the um, uh, appointment of the Board of Review out of the consent agenda and make that an item G in your action request. Okay. And then remove the ZBA portion of tonight's meeting. Please, ZBA is crossed. Yeah. Um, okay. I think there was one more that needed to be. I think that was it. No, we have one more that needs to be taken out. Is it not on here? Um, the Alliance Employee Assistance yes. Program. Yes, they are not going to be able to make it today. So, so. that. Awesome. So I'll add that into my motion. So there I go, trying to repeat it. So for the approval, we're looking for a second on moving the uh, Board of Review appointment to be letter G, changing the closed session to letter, no, sorry. Oh, yeah. Changing the closed session to be the first on the list for the action request. And then for the last item under action request will be the labor attorney general's action and removing zoning board of appeals. Is that correct? I'll tell you one more time. <laughs> We're going to go into the closed session at the beginning of the action request. Just, Just prior, prior to action. the action request. Sorry. Everyone have that? Is there a second? Second. Moved in the second. Uh, roll call. Council Member Jennings? No. <laughs> yes. Mayor Pro Tim Cantor? Yes. Council Member Kinez? Yes. Council Member Miller? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Motion to uh, so, that's what so first up is the proclamation for recognizing the 100th birthday of Julia. Are they? 
anyone? Nope. If no one's here from it. So um, one, just to quickly go through this, is that uh, Ms. Harvey was born in Sydney, Mississippi on February 23rd, 1923, then moved to Michigan in 1945. Um, and she has been a uh, resident of Lather Village since 2005. And uh, the United States has the greatest number of centenarians in the world. And on the 23rd, Ms. Harvey uh, was honored for 100 years on this earth. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Michael Garrett, Mayor of, Mayor of the City of Lake Village, and on behalf of the City Council and the citizens of Lake Village, honor Ms. Harvey for her long life and prosperity and wish her many more. And this was on the 23rd day of February. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have my okay. So the first up is presentation. Nope. I can't see the first one. Presentation. Oh yeah, the presentation. Oh, no, yes. there. you know what to do. So Thank you. Mary Thompson, you have uh, 2017 annual report in front of you. You've had it for a couple of months, but you want me to go over through some of the pages that can do that. On page two, it is kind of a flow chart of our uh, department breakdown of officers and uh, reserves. Page three is a list of all the training we've done throughout the year. It tells you how many people have gone to each one of those trainings. <clears throat> and then we, we kind of break that training down so you can see like a larger group, uh, legal update, firearms, mental health, use of force, leadership. We try to break it down so you can see uh, what we go through uh, throughout the year. Okay. We're going to move into the part A and part B plans. There is a breakdown to 2021 to 22, and you can see that there is a slight uptick um, to the crime between part A and part B. And there's a definition of those uh, listed on that page. If you go over to the next page, it actually does a five year average. So if you look at the actual five years, it's a pretty flat number. <clears throat> and obviously, we had a drop uh, during COVID from 19 to 20 to 21. The 22 numbers are just about equal to C2. <clears throat> Next page, we go through our call for service. Um, they are going up, but I think I, our officers are doing a better job of documenting what they do throughout their uh, throughout their day. Um, so when they're doing things, they're always pulling numbers to make sure that they're getting credit for everything that they do out of their show. Um, it also uh, encompasses accidents and pretty flat for the five-year average. Um, we had no fatalities uh, last year, thank goodness. And then um, there's a ticket summary uh, down at the bottom. And then the following page, we will actually have a uh, seniority list of uh, all the employees that we have here, how much time they have in grade here at the department, as well as other departments they work at. Can you go? Can you? I'm sorry, I'm trying to get my bearings. Can you go back to the you said the ticket uh, overview? Just so, yeah, uh, second to the last page, there is a ticket summary, and it's just an overall um, traffic violations, motor carrier violations. Okay, the five year five year count. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Did the did the motor carrier look like it dropped in half? Did that was was that just happen happenstance or uh, off the back of retired and ah, got it? Because <laughs> I know those are are pretty lucrative from yes. from a perspective of revenue. Yeah, that's on the agenda to get that filled. We uh, we do have the training packs come out uh, for motor carrier in in May. Yeah. Speaking of lucrative, the um, do we have data on what all of this comes out to in revenue for the city? I don't have anything here. Um, we can uh, get a printout from the court.
that the ticket ticket revenue is broken out between the, the state, the port, and then the city. Okay. So that yeah, that's something I could definitely look at. Okay. For the future, that'd be great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I do have a question, sure. and it's only because I I found out about it. And I think that's something that we as a council have to think about is when um, someone has to use their personal phone or city uh, business to try to figure out a way of reimbursement. Teresa had to use her phone while we had mm -hmm. uh, the phones route. Yes. I was just trying to figure out if there's a way to reimburse for using her phone. Or it seemed that, I mean, I'm not really sure how the calls came through, but I'm assuming that she got the non emergency calls. I don't know. Right now, I'm getting the numbers. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure. Who. Okay. So I, I have a department cell phone. Okay. So yeah, it's just taking care of business when we need to do it. Okay. Well then, we're we're trying to re that. we're trying to reroute that the non emergency call like that when the yep. lines were down. Mm -hmm. We're trying to get them routed over to South of this Okay. So that way, if I'm at home, it, it's just prolonging the one step, or if we can just get it routed to South of this we can get right over to it. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Anyone have anything else? Thank you, Chief. Oh, thank you, Chief, for coming to report on this since we did. Anytime. We did harass you for it. Thank you. I did not. <laughs> Jalen harassed <you. laughs> Next up, we have the uh, 2022 Downtown Development Authority annual report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, I, too, am here to present the DDA's uh, 2022 uh, annual report um, and provide you with um, a synopsis of all of the wonderful things that we were able to accomplish. So I believe you all have a copy of the annual report um, from at least a month ago. Um, and just to really highlight, um, you know, for the benefit of those that may be listening at home or watching on, on Facebook, um, so the DDA was formed in 1998. Standard in 99. Um, and the mission of the DDA is to undertake public improvements that have the greatest impact to strengthen the downtown area and attract new investments. And so we do that by leveraging our public and private dollars for the benefit primarily of the business district, which runs from Lincoln to 12 Mile and um, along 12 Mile and a bit along um, the 11 Mile service drive. So we are. Um, our board is consisted of uh, a nine mayor board, I'm sorry, a nine person board, including the mayor um, and eight appointees, two of whom are here. Um, we've got our chair, Fred Prime, is here, and also our, our secretary, Pam Schermeyer, um, both residents of the city of Lakeford Village. Uh, we are staffed by myself, Brittany Dorsey, and uh, Pam Bracci. Um, as you can see in the report, um, our annual budgeted revenues are, uh, are I quickly are straddled, um, straddled the calendar year in their city uh, starting July 1. So uh, our revenues have been budgeted around uh, 360000 for the last, uh, for last year, for this year, and 350 for last year. Uh, we are, you can see, we are paying spend some funds this year. Um, in 2023, we will be dipping into our fund balance, which you can see is at approximately $1.4 million. We have been saving those funds uh, since the inception of the DDA, specifically to make infrastructure improvements for Southfield Road. Um, and those, some of those activities are what we've accomplished this year. Um, we have, as a whole, experienced a uh, transition in 2022. Uh, we, our previous DDA manager uh, took another position. We were able to find another very, uh, very capable individual in Brittany Dorsey, and she had uh, put a lot of effort into uh, helping the DDA uh, continue to host events through, throughout last year. Uh, we had over 20 community events. Uh, these are both individual DDA events as well as events in which we partner. Uh, we've had more than 2,000 attendees at all of these events, um, 126 volunteers and over 70 volunteer hours. So um, that is wonderful. And as we continue to grow and expand our reach um, into 
the business district and the community as a whole. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the 2023 numbers uh, jump significantly there. Um, some of the accomplishments I'd like to hire, I, I like to hire, are the street shaping projects, which have included the hanging baskets and re, uh, redoing the different flower, uh, flower pots and flower beds. Uh, we've also had two informational meetings, uh, which are a statutory requirement of public act 57, which is what guides uh, the DDA and other uh, taxing authorities. Uh, so those meetings were held in August, on August 4th, and again on December 16th. Uh, we had approximately 20 of those, 20 individuals attend those events. Our infrastructure improvements have been very large. Uh, the DDA paid for the installation of sidewalks both along Southfield Road and along 12 Mile Road within the district. Uh, we also have undertaken, uh, well, and that amounts to, just for numbers sake, 15,000 lineal feet of sidewalk along, uh, along 12 Mile Road. Um, and I don't know if anyone had the pleasure of uh, I see Bruce nodding his head. Yep, that was like a bumpy stretch. And yeah. uh, so there were eight inches of asphalt underneath there. So uh, dramatic improvement for those those sidewalks up there. Uh, well, PDA spotlight. has also yeah. undertaken an alley assessment uh, to, to really uh, make some strategic improvements to the alleyways and the approaches. So we have a five-year plan um, to complete a whole lot of work. Um, we have in 2022, we repaired six alley approaches in one alley. Uh, we have planned at least two alleyways and the adjacent uh, approaches for 2023. Um, and lastly, we are, we've been given the go ahead by the road commission to proceed with installing a, a hop signal, pedestrian activated signal uh, along across South Steel Road near Margate Avenue. And uh, we are working with HRC to design uh, design that that safety feature. So we're expected, we're cautiously optimistic that we'll get that installed by the end of the year, but if not, into 2024. Um, and that's the, the funding for those infrastructure improvements specifically are from the fund balance, which again is something that we've been building and saving specifically for these kinds of activities. Uh, our work has not been limited to just infrastructure, uh, however. We've also had several uh, events and promotional campaigns, including Trunk or Treat, which saw an insanely wonderful turnout of some very, very happy kids. We had over 200 attendees. Um, and that event had uh, included music, candy, uh, candy costume contest, and, and so much more. Um, we've expanded our Southfield Road corridor of cleanup, and we have officially adopted uh, Southfield Road from the Road Commission for that endeavor. Um, we are working to build our volunteer base for that um, and having our own set aside cleanup crew. Uh, we've also partnered with the Lakewood Village uh, Community Foundation on their summer, summer concert series. And we are expecting to do so again this year when we're working with them already on scheduling um, and future marketing for that. We have had, we've also hosted our second annual Juneteenth celebration uh, on June 18th of 2022. Uh, this is an event that is continue to grow and receive attention um, at each year that we've had it. It will be the <coughs> third Saturday of June uh, from, from, this, from this year forward, as a matter of fact. So we're looking forward to um, continuing that celebration. Um, we've also, again, had our shop small uh, winter artisan market um, this year. Uh, this is an event that is now in our third year. Um, we did have a brief hiatus uh, during COVID, but uh, we continue to grow this event um, each year uh, with more and more vendors and attendees. And we're continually looking for ways to improve that um, and finding ways to engage our the makers of Labor Village. Um, and lastly, we uh, implemented a new adopt a senior 
program in partnership with the police department. Um, we had originally partnered with uh, the Boys Penn Youth Foundation, which is a local nonprofit in Lake Village, um, to help provide job training and life skills um, to the boys who are participating in this program. After speaking with uh, the police department and their their needs for the adopt a senior program, we said this is a better partnership. And so those boys were able to uh, we're able to help seniors in the village that do not necessarily have a support network. They were all able to get support through those boys, um, and they were doing light yard work, helping them clean around, uh, clean around their yard. Um, so it was generally very, very well received, and we're looking forward to uh, continuing that program again into 2023 and 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 expanding it to include individuals. So uh, all in all, uh, the DDA is quite happy um, with uh, the things that we were able to accomplish this year. Uh, we're we're really excited about the momentum that we're we're building, and uh, we're looking forward to make another exciting year in 2022. Thank you. Question. So. Can you speak to why the police didn't just ask Boys to Men to work with them? I, I know they want to take it back, but can you speak to that? It was, um, I oh, don't know geez. if it was a, a matter of not asking the police, but it was a conversation that, uh, that the DEA had already done with Boys okay. to Men. Um, for, for, we had uh, we had grand designs of, of having those boys help us maintain the flower beds and, and help us um, in that way. And it was just after uh, having those conversations with Boys Men's leadership that said, hey, you know, I have to the police and their adopted senior programs can benefit from your from your 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 boys instead of the DDA. So we we formed that connection. Thank you. Does that help answer your question? I'll, I'll talk to you offline. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to know, will we get like a like an overview or renderings of the Hawk process of how that will look? Or Yes. Once yes. I have that information, I will very excited to share that with you. I'm, okay. I'm so excited for that. But yeah, and we have we've not... <laughs> Yeah, even done. I, mean, we're I, I understand. Very, very early. I understand. Yes, I will absolutely share all of that information. Okay. Uh, two more questions. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to make sure. I know you guys talked about like the hanging basket thing process. You know how Bruce had that issue over the summer. Mm -hmm. Is that gonna be yeah, rectified? Yeah, which never got this, resolved. This go around. No, it just needed to be turned 180 degrees. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that would that would be. Thank you. Oh, last question. Okay, so you know, I like to work. um, so the banners, right? Yeah. Do you guys have plans to update the banners? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're we're spreading our state love out love out a little bit over the year, but yeah, for over the years, I think. Okay. So yeah, we are planning to get. Uh, new banners, actually, with our new, um, our, our wonderful new branding that we worked on last year okay. in 2021. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, we are planning to get new banners. Okay. Only reason I ask is because the welcome banner doesn't say Lake the Village on it, it just says welcome. And I, I had an issue with that. So, but it was a great banner overall. I just <laughs> wish it would have the city name on it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other yeah. questions? I just want to make a comment. I want to thank Scott and Susie for coming and doing that. It was my request that uh, annual reports be presented to the residents so that people know what's going on. That was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. So we don't have the Zoning Board of Appeals, so we'll skip right down to public comments for items on the agenda. Speakers are limited to three minutes. And again, this is items that's on the agenda. So you have to anyone in the audience? Anyone online that would like to speak for three minutes for items on the agenda? 
Madam Mayor, if I could add, um, just maybe ask the audience if this was noticed for a public hearing for the DBA, so if anyone is here for that. Is anyone here? Okay, don't <laughs> jump up at once. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well then um, we'll skip down to the consent agenda. We already pulled out D. Is there anything else that needs to be pulled out? Hearing? Yes. Um, I'd like to pull E. Okay. Anything else? E. Um, it is E. I know. I don't think she has another one. That's all. I'm Are you upset? Oh, mm -hmm. oh, I'll make okay. a motion to approve the consent agenda with pulling item E out. Second. It's been moved and second. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Yes. Council Member Jennings. Yes. Council Member Kinez. Yes. Council Member Miller. Yes. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. So because the D is actually going to be an action item. We'll skip right down to um, the February 2023. Um, the, this first, this first, January 20. Okay. Um, and just FYI, our city manager is out, I'm assuming for the rest of the week. So um, hopefully we'll be able to answer all these questions. If not, sorry, January 2023 is that. Well, I apologize. Um, hopefully we'll be able to answer uh, the questions. If not, then we just make sure that they are um, repeated at the next meeting and answer. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Uh, just take 51. Uh, in, in tell it on text, Oh, wait, 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 wait. Can you be more specific? Because my page 51 is not your page 51. I'll play it again. No, I'm saying on We're here. We have the numbers on here, though. Page one of six of the distribution report in the upper right hand corner. Thank you. Yeah, page one of six. Mm -hmm. uh, Intelli Antix Inc. Self Service Portal, $627.75. I don't remember seeing that before, but maybe it has been on there. Under government services yes. or the government of operations, yes. I will have to get back with you on that. Okay. And then also um, under government operations, the the um there's a jagged fork in marking for the SACMA dinner. And I know that was something that we attended. I just um <clears throat> am wondering what I couldn't find any information on SACMA Mark. This is the first that was the first time I've heard of it being on city council for a year and a half. So I'm just wondering what the organization is. There was something that said there were other communities that were co-sponsoring. So will we be reimbursed for some of that money? Um, what does this, what does it look like? So which question would you like me to answer first? Um, all of them. I mean, okay, <laughs> so South Oakland, Oakland, South Oakland uh, it's South Oakland Mayor's Association. So it's only for mayors in South Oakland. Uh, county. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot when it first started, but the, um, I'm sure there's something. So South Oakland County Mayor's Association, if you look it up, mm -hmm. it should I be. I did look it up. There wasn't anything. I think I for South Oakland. Mm -hmm. um, South Oakland County Mayor's Association. So um, as long for the 12 years that I've been on council, uh, the previous mayor always attended it. I attended it in his um, place. Um, unfortunately, and I knew this was going to come up, the SACMA dinner was supposed to be split between um, us and other communities. And I did not know it wasn't split until I saw it on here. Okay. Um, and so my understanding is that we are waiting for reimbursement from the other communities. Right. Okay. Great. And that is the honorarium for the actual speaker um, for the dinner. And Mayor, usually when um, in the past on these uh, aqua or the, the mayor dinners, they have the city that is hosting it pays it up front and then we get reimbursed. Oh, okay. So it is supposed yeah. to be like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Yeah, it's always been like that. Thank you. Yep. But that was my question also. Yes. 
And how do you, does the group meet monthly or how often do they meet? It meets every Monday, every Monday, oh, sorry. Wow. Every month we meet the third Wednesday of every month. Um, if the mayor can't go, then the mayor pro tem um, goes in the mayor's place. If the city is, if the, whoever's hosting the mayor, uh, whoever's hosting the meeting, the entire council goes for that particular city. Correct. And this is the first time we post here? Absolutely not. So we were supposed to have one in, uh, I want to say it was January, not this past January, because we missed one. It was the last July or June. Somewhere we missed one where we were supposed to host. We hosted one because um, it rotates through all of the cities. We normally, which I don't think it's there anymore, we hosted at Big Rock at least three times since I've been on council. Yeah, also at the Prudential Town Center, we had one. No, when we hosted it, because we were supposed yeah. to host at the Mint. Oh, was that Southfield? That was Southfield, yeah. yeah. Um, and then two, at, two or three at Big Rock, and then this will be January 4th, the fifth one. And I can't remember, but most of the times we partner with uh, Birmingham and we'll go to Big Rock. And um, what organizations or cities are part of it? Because I believe Northville was at that one. Um, all of Oakland County. Also. Part of the Oakland no, County? Or? No, it's not. It's Wayne, and I forgot why they were there. Um, I forgot. I don't know. You would have to ask that. And so it's supposed to be all the mayors of South Oakland County. So okay. I don't know why North. North yeah. He probably just got invited or something. Yeah. No. Maybe it was going to Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know which side that he was coming from. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is half and half. <laughs> I forgot. Thank you for correcting. But I can find the um, list. I think I have a uh, list of all the cities and I can uh, send it to you. It'd be great. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, yes. Um, Kate, oh, shoot. I don't know. Page it says 59. It's actually the description. Okay. That's oh, okay. actually before you go, look at the up. So if you want me to tell you, it is Berkeley, Beverly Hills, Birmingham, Clawson, Farmington, Farmington Hills, Ferndale, Hazel Park, Huntington Woods, Madison Heights, Northville. That's why they were there. Okay, it's the Oakland County side. Novi, Oak Park, Pleasant Ridge, Royal Oak, Royal Oak Township, South Hill, South Hill Lion, Troy, and Wixom. Still send that to me. I didn't get this all written down. Oh, okay. So it was. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Um, there is a. This is page two of two of I don't have to go some pages of it. Um, item 9E. And I don't know. Go ahead. Just so that receipt and review of multiple correspondence from Council Women Royal. Does that mean that those are um, emails that I sent to you, Scott, or other people, or how how does that how does that work? Because I Multiple email. Those would be those would be any email that were sent, and this is you're referencing the retainer section, which is um, it's just an accounting of time spent. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to find what entry. Oh. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm just asking for an example because I've yeah. So if it's multiple if, times. Yeah. If it's just if there's like a, a back and forth, and I'm copied on it. I'll note it, just usually say receipt multiple. If I, if I don't respond, um, if it requires some sort of special action or time, then it won't show up on there. But if it's just receiving, that's typically, that's typically what it is. Okay, but that means for something that I sent you. Correct. Okay. Or like if you sent something to the mayor and copied me on it, right. then I would then okay. I would note that. Well. Okay, thank you. And then um, under prosecution code enforcement, it was a C review and response to correspondence from quality towing attorneys. Telephone conference with same remotion to quash subpoena. Correct. There was an issue. Uh, there was this, a traffic crash mm -hmm. where uh, police, police department impounded a uh, vehicle 
the driver of that vehicle. Actually, both both the vehicles were damaged. You may be aware of this, but uh, both the vehicles were damaged and were on undrivable, so quality towing took both those and impounded them. Uh, the at-fault driver was issued a civil infraction for their role in the accident. The, that individual's attorney fought, uh, served a subpoena not only on quality towing, but also on uh, Sergeant Zhang um, to turn over black box information for that vehicle. Because it's a, a civil infraction, there's no subpoena power in a, in a district court case, so we had to respond to that and communicate with their, their attorneys uh, on that procedure. Okay, thank you. And then last thing is um, this budget report revenue versus expenditures for month, month end of January 31st, 2023. We have um, <clears throat> revenue through January 31st of $6,459,659, and we have expenses of $8,112,754, which uh, with a difference of negative one million six hundred fifty-three thousand ninety-five dollars. That because uh, funds haven't been reimbursed yet. That's or... all. That is all the funds that are there. And if you look, we don't have all of our major and local. We are two months behind on major and local revenue coming in. Okay. Um, from or major and local, yeah, revenue coming in. Okay. Um, capital acquisition. That was transferred here in February, so you probably will not see that till February that the money was transferred there okay. for that one. Um, roads, we don't, we're not taking anything, you know, revenue that's coming in there is just the interest that's coming in for the roads. Okay. And DDA, um, they have not gotten all their money yet for their revenue for the taxes and that, so. Okay. And that will be coming in as soon as I settle with the county on the um, taxes, so. And then the water and sewer fund. Will that and that will be water and sewer fund. We still are getting money in there. And plus there's going to be a transfer of money coming in from the bonds, which has not been put in there yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll make a motion to approve the January 2023 distribution report. Second. Then we'll move to second is there's no, uh, oh yeah. Any further discussion? No, no. Roll call, please. Councilmember Ganesh? Yes. Councilmember Miller? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Councilmember Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Cantor? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. So if I'm reading my list right, we're going to now um, offer a roll up, do a uh, motion to close and go into a closed door session. So Correct. And I, and I just ask that whoever makes the motion include the specifics that we're going to. In the closed section, pursuant to Section 8H of the Open Meetings Act, we discuss a written uh, attorney client correspondence from the city. Is that 8H? 8H from the city's labor attorney. Okay. All right, so I'll make a motion uh, to close the uh, council meeting and move into closed session pursuant to uh, Item 8H of the Open Meetings Act to discuss a uh, written action from the city's labor attorney. Do we have a second? Second. So move and second. Uh, do we have to do a roll call or do we just close the like no, we do. Roll call. Roll call, please. Council Member Miller? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Council Member Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tim Yes. Council Member Kinetic? Yes. Motion. Thank you. We will be adjourned. Okay. Kitchen tank. Um, Oh, start over. <laughs> this is to bring up our um, retention tank up to um, that the um, Oakland County, are, they're going to be using it for the Evergreen Farmington to um, help with the flow of things going down to the Ever Ever Evergreen Farmington. And we have um, members here from Oakland County that will be able to answer any questions you have. They probably have more information on it than I do. They can help out with anything that else that you might need. And so if you'd like to, you can go to that computer right there and talk. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one, can I have a motion to accept the sanitary retention tank cost sharing agreement? Motion to approve the cost sharing agreement for the sanitary retention tank project between the Evergreen Farmington Sanitary Drain 
uh, Commission District and the City of Lakewood Village. Second. It's moved and second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, just a couple of points. Um, just to be clear or to be to be specific, the money from this is coming out of the capital improvement bond. Um, we had originally, uh, well, probably four, almost well, three and a half years ago, uh, we estimated about five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars for this. It turns out that it's going to be about eight hundred and fifty-eight thousand, no um, which the capital improvement bond can still very easily cover. Which is something that I'll talk about a little bit uh, later when we get into the study group recommendation. But we are. Um, uh, dramatically under budget uh, for the capital improvement bond. And so this this money can very easily be absorbed um, from the capital improvement bond. That was only two years ago. Well, when we started talking about it and putting the estimates together. Yeah, December 21, 2020. Yeah, but what, what's yeah. the, what, why the big jump from 500,000 to 858,000? It, it was an estimate at the time of what we thought needed to be done. And then, then you know, now, Two and a half years later, they're they're into the more specific estimate, and, and they can probably talk more about that than, yeah. than, than I can. The original cost was based off of uh, engineers' estimate, and then we waited until we got the cost from the contractors. And what we've been seeing across the board is this um, higher cost for construction that we have just in the last few years. So that's why that cost is a little bit higher than what we today. Okay, I mean, a lot. <laughs> was, was the estimate off? or no, was... the estimate wasn't off. It's just that the, the price has gone up that much. Okay. The best world is up there. Okay. That's why we waited until we actually had actual costs instead of filling the units with the estimates. Okay. So, who can you guys share? Like, who's the, <clears throat> who you guys are working with? Um, the bidder is a company called Midwest Power Systems. Okay, where the where are they based they, on? They, they're based on Milford, right? Correct. Right. Any the lowest response bidder, I believe we had four bids. Mm -hmm. Um, and they range anywhere from about two point two to I want to say six million was the highest. Okay, so they were it was a, a big range. Right. Yeah. Well, and I assume we've checked references and everything. Why yeah, we got yeah, we've done a bunch of work at other uh, treatment plants. And then, uh, uh, and then uh, we don't have So, in the document, it says the project includes mechanical HVAC building, electrical, and instrumentation replacement or repairs. So, who would be responsible for those? Uh, the contractor will be doing all the work. Okay. Uh, Fulton County PRC will be overseeing it. Okay. Our engineers, um, PRC did the design work and they'll be involved in it. Okay. So they will be the ones doing, like, if we ever have repairs, Oakland County will be doing. Um, um, so that's yes. another. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as the agreement goes with the cost sharing, um, <laughs> so Blazer so, Village is under an administrative consent order with the state of Michigan to eliminate sanitary sewer overflows during large storm events from this facility. In addition, Evergreen Farmington is under a similar administrative consent order for overflows on eight mile. So us coming together, we can build one project that solves both of our problems. Um, and so this is really a great solution for our region. And what it does for Lathrop, so things like HVAC and any type of improvement to the facility itself um, is going to be borne by the village, uh, Lathrop Village moving forward. So um, anything that is increased in order to push additional head to the Evergreen Birmingham, because that's what we're doing, we're causing a higher pressure for you to push against when you discharge. Um, is going to be borne by Evergreen Farmington today for the initial capital improvement. So some electrical upgrades, some pump stations. But what this agreement does is moving forward, the village, the uh, city of Lathrop Village will still own this facility. All assets within the facility are still listed as being owned um, by the city of Lathrop Village. So there will be no transfer of ownership. So you will still will pay for this initial upfront cost. Um, as part of that, you're getting an additional six CFS of capacity in our system, which you desperately needed. That way you don't have to actually upsize this facility or do some I, &I removal in your system. And as that trade-off, we're getting this uh, additional grade separation as part of the project. 
And that puts us up to about 10 right now. Uh, 3.35 now, right? Yeah, you're, I don't know the number offhand, but I can look that up. Yeah. Does the school leak uh, have any impact on this? I'm not aware of it. We did check with retention tank and ran some calcs. We figured one of these works. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to double check that to bring one pretty dry out. Okay. And then I also thought I saw a public on the public records for Oakland County. I thought it showed Oakland County as the owner of the retention tank. Is that? Mm -hmm. okay. They, they, they do the maintenance on it. We do the operation and maintenance on behalf of the, the city. city. And Pam is very happy about that. <laughs> okay, I mean, let me check it out. I think it says that the Oakland County is the owner, but I'll, I'll um, verify that. Or I'll, and then I guess we'll have to be changed if that's not the case. So yeah. thank you. Any additional questions? Hearing none, roll call please. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Councilmember Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Councilmember Kinez? Yes. Councilmember Miller? No. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, thank you. Thank you. Thank Next, you. we have the 2023 pavement resurfacing project recommendation of bid. Mr. Rainbow, I'm assuming. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you. Papers. I don't know if you are. You are. Well, uh, good evening, Mayor Council. Scott Ringler with Kipple Webster. Uh, before you tonight is uh, our recommendation for a contract award for the 2023 payment and surfacing project. Uh, on February 16th, bids were due. Uh, a total of seven bids were received. They range from Two point three nine million and some change, but three point three four one million and some change. Uh, the low bid was submitted by F Allen Construction Company. Uh, they're located in Clarkston. Uh, and in review of the paving bond issue, uh, we piggyback a bunch of other projects onto this. So, you know, we have identified all the costs. Uh, we take the total bid minus all the piggyback projects. Uh, the total amount to the paving bond issue was about 1.797 million, in which we're fairly confident we have about 1.786 million left in the bond issue. So we're really, really close. So uh, with that, there's a uh, three and a half miles of these surfaces <laughs> on about 15 different streets. And um, you know, I've attached the bid tab, I attached the map. Uh, that map shows a lot of work going on in the road. So, I'm going to get starting today or tomorrow with continue that Um, Can I have a motion, please? Yeah, I'll, make, I'll make a motion to award the 2022, 2023 pavement resurfacing program to FLI Construction uh, $2,398,690.35. Second. It's uh, been moved and seconded to award the 2023 pavement resurfacing of Pro F Ally Construction Company in the amount of two million three hundred ninety-eight thousand six hundred ninety dollars and thirty-five cents. Yes, I think I said everything. Is there any discussion? Yes. 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 Some questions. Okay. Everything that's on here in the Medium gray, I guess that's all promised resurfacing. You should have the color oh. <laughs> Which one are you concerned about? Yeah. I just, well, check check oh, thank you. Oh, no, I just want to make sure that we're covering all these roads for that price. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what was included in the bid. Uh, the, the darker blue ones, yeah, those or are, blue. Yeah. yeah, medium blue, medium blue. Okay, medium blue are the roads. The roads, okay, because I thought when I was at the um, your meeting, yes, that we weren't going to be. You're going to add some to these, possibly. No, so, so what? I think what you're thinking of is is so when when we bid this out, we bid it out. And there were there were three. Let me step out. 
in our last road recommendation for the last for the 2023 construction season, there were three roads that were designated as options. Uh, should we have enough money? Because we had over the first two years, we had uh, budget surpluses. So we were just, the idea was to put it towards those those the existing roads that were in the 2023 recommendation plus those three optional roads. So this particular bid covers the three optional the, roads. Includes the three optional roads. And okay. what we talked about in the study group, I think is what we're thinking about is should we come up, should we see some unexpected high costs from say we say we start looking at uh red river and there's a requires additional work and we have to spend more money then one of the things we have two options at that point we come to council and or they come to council and, and we approve money to be taken out of the local road fund to cover that overage or alternatively we can begin pulling those optional trees off of the table and which ones are the optional? So the optional is uh, north on the north end of, of Bloomfield, uh, Frank Brock Way right here next to the uh, City Hall, and then I think it's California right next to Panera, that, that small section right there that's horrible. Which one? California? It's right Is there, it on right here now? I think it's right here. Oh, no, that's Golden Gate. Um, Here's California. Yeah, California right here. Oh, the, that oh really that's not even on section. there. It's, yeah, it's, it's Golden Gate West extension. Yeah, exactly. I think, yeah, right. Oh, it's, it's this one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you would pull the, because I've been on all three of these streets. They're all kind of, they're all really bad. Yeah, like I said, we're just, you know, just as a paving bond issue, it was really a budget amount. We want to make sure we got something in our back pocket in case we run into a street that falls apart on us. Mm -hmm. And additional cost has to be incurred to make them repairs. Right. So we have two options should that should that happen. Well, can because I'm looking at El Dorado, which was an add-on road because of the group that came here. But that's not part of the paving bond. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not part of the, the 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 millage program. That's a separate SAD that that's being covered by the cost. The cost is be covered by the residents as well as our share will be out of the local road fund. So we're already pulling from the local road fund to do this. Correct. So would we pull from the local road fund to do these? That could be an option, either that or, or not do those roads. I think they need to be done. Right, but but they were they were put in there as as optional because again it's hard to it's hard to know exactly you know as you get into the third year where the expenditures are going to go relative to the amount of roads again. So so are you saying we're voting on optional roads right now? No, no. No, the, the optional roads are included in, in, in the bid, the entire bid. Okay. So right now, assuming that there are no problems, all the roads plus the three optional okay. roads are covered in this spot. Okay, okay. I was just making sure. Yeah, and then we have contingency later on should, mm -hmm. should something come up. Is this part of the optional too? No. That's... So you're just talking that dinky little thing? Yep, the dinky little thing. <laughs> the, the small this one... north of... And then uh, this, and then Frank Rock away right next to us. We wouldn't be able to cover these three. It just depends on what we find. I mean, we're, we're I mean, you can see we're already about about ten thousand dollars over on the bid, so that'll have to come out of the local road fund. But, That's but again, if we if we have, you know, if we run into something major, then we have to make those decisions. That that will be our job to make those decisions. That's why you don't determine that it's under budget after the first year. But it was under budget after the first year. But there, it's a whole project. And look at now we don't have have uh, money to do things that really need to be done. How do you figure? It's it, the, the, the paving big contract is the prospect allied is bidding right in at what we what we have estimated. So it's aligned. Right. If nothing else comes up, um, also I have a question. Now, the, the bids were due on February 16th, and San Diego is on there, but I don't, didn't the infrastructure committee meet on March 1st and determine that they were going to do San Diego? Not the roads. So, so we're talking about the road, I'm talking about the, the, water, the main. water main. Yeah, and, and I, on this bid is already water main trench repair for San Diego. Yeah, I, I, I did put it on there. I'm going to make sure we got it. I mean, if San Diego doesn't move forward, we won't do that. We won't have that trench repair to do. And that trench repair is covered under the capital. Well, I know, but if it wasn't, I mean, yeah. wasn't discussed or determined 
till March 1st by the infrastructure committee. How is it even in there? Uh, like I said, we, we wanted to at least get it bid out. Uh, we can always pull it. It's not a big issue. No, I, I mean, I don't think we can afford to pull it. I think we need to be putting more money into water mains rather than less. So. There's a big roll Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, so San Diego and Glenwood are getting water main replacement. Oh, and what's this little thing? That's Bloomfield. There's a section on Bloomfield. Just a little section. Um, but they're not getting the road after they dig up the road for the water main? Or you don't have to dig up the road? No, 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 it doesn't that, go that, that far. Starts at sunset yeah. and we build it south. Yeah, that's a long. So that's not being paved. That's just just doing the water main. Yeah. And is that section of Bloomfield then? Will that be paved and included in the repaving of all of it? Yes, yes. And there's a water main section going along there too. It will be patched in. Okay. Any additional so, so you said it's going to be patched in. Are you going to do the water main first? Or, okay. Any additional questions? Okay. Hearing none, roll call, please. Councilmember Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Councilmember Kinez? Yes. Councilmember Miller? No. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Motion carried. Um, next up is the Gatewell cleaning coach. Uh, so uh, before you tonight, we have uh, a recommendation. We, we got a quote between about 298 wells. Eight wells that are located in the city. The majority of them are located along the South Field corridor. Uh, so DPW. LLC or the Lakeup LLC has tried to get in these two minutes of the gate valve repairs or refurbishments, and they're they're capable of dirt and debris all the way from the bottom of the gate well all the way up to what we call the stem where they turn the, the valve on and off. Uh, last year, Lakeup LLC did clean one of them that took them about eight hours. It was very tedious work. So we got a quote from DDM who did your field place pipe program because they have a large backers that they're able to back to that material out. Uh, they quoted $375 each. And just in case they need some traffic control, uh, they asked uh, for $1,300 a day to do traffic control on the South Hill Road. I personally don't think they need it because these gate walls are way off the road. They should be able to work from the side streets. Uh, but we did want to make sure we put that in the budget. So uh, before you is, is a recommendation to uh, approve their quote about a total of $12,175. That would be in the capital improvement bond uh, paid out of that because it's, it's relative to the gate wells. So you need a motion? Oh, yeah, gotcha. Someone like to make a motion. Motion to approve the quote submitted by DBW Utilities in the amount of $12,000. $1,175 for gate well cleaning and traffic control. Second. Okay, now it's going to be the second. Okay, question. so for the traffic controls, would you be dispersing that to them or like how how is that figured into the project? If they don't need it, they don't get paid for it. They don't get paid for it. Okay, I just wanted to make it's sure. It's been communicated to them that you don't think they need it or if you just have yeah. to go. Okay. Any further questions? Well, just to oh. add to that, there's a safety issue too. So if they feel like something's really too close to Southfield Road and they need to take a lane down, then I'll have to get rid of that. Okay. Will, will like, um, the city be alerted about this or? Okay. Okay. Will it be like in the morning so we all know? <laughs> okay. Um, and then is there, so do you think there's a way to keep up with these or do you think this will be like something that 
in five years we'll have to come back and spend the same amount? Or... No, I mean, these uh, they for LLC Rams and those two things have been changing in years and years and years. Uh, okay. But you mostly get, you know, they're, they're always full of water. And Understood. Right. I would imagine the ones on Southfield Road would, as opposed to other ones, would fill up quicker because they're closer and there's more debris. Uh, debris and... Well, no, fish. Is I there, think the city should be able to put on program to clean this and there's no way to like protect from debris or anything like that mm -hmm. okay. yeah it costs more money you know a lot of these uh these gate wells are brick so these and, you know some of them are <laughs> 400 years old so you know they can get some infiltration to it uh oh, okay. that's actually brick how long has it been since they've actually bricked these? Oh, some of them are probably just no, no, but I mean, new ones now, but they don't, oh, they don't brick them anymore. It's all pre 60s, probably 70s, and stopped using brick. Yeah, probably. And so, when you said that we need to be on a, the DPW needs to be on a program to um, flush the hydrants and clean the gate valves, what's the ideal time for it? How often, I should say? Uh, every community is a little different. A lot of communities do it once a year. I know some of them do it twice a year. I don't think Lake Trips ever really had a flushing program, and you know, some of the concerns of the fire department was expressing a lot of debris in them from minerals. Yeah. So I guess my question is, I mean, I know it's considerably more, but is there a way for you to at least get a quote so we can see what it looks like? I mean, to to go the more expensive route? I'm not saying you have to, but I'm, I'm just you, curious. I'm asking you that. We have 250 of these. I mean, I'm just future thinking. That's all I'm asking. I mean, you know, you've done a lot of that work with your, your sanitary control back in the I think it was the mid 90s, most of them went through a rehab program uh, where it's actually, you know, you use a cementitious grill inside of the manholes and you grow up all that brick. Okay. Uh, and, and it's actually held pretty fairly well. Okay. Thank you. I just have a quick question. How long do you think this to, to do this particular project? What's the length of time do you anticipate? Uh, three days. And then when do you think they'd start? I'll have to get in touch with them tomorrow. I mean, do they work uh, in the winter? What's that? Would yeah. they wait till spring or they could no, even start they right away? Two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Councilmember Kinez? Yes. Councilmember Miller? Yes. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Councilmember Jennings? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have a 2023 water main uh, recommendation. So um, this, this came out of the uh, infrastructure study group. Um, just a little bit of background. The, you know, when, when the um, project was approved by City, City Council in December of 2020, the three-year capital improvement bond project, it was a $7.3 million project, of which $5.4 million was in general obligation bonds and 1.9 million was, was expected to be used out of the uh, $4 million balance of the city's water and sewer fund. So the, the, the good news is, is that the, the capital improvement bond has been um, uh, dramatically under, under budget for a variety of reasons, you know, the really five main reasons. One was, you know, at the time um, when we put together the capital improvement bond, uh, it, was, it was assumed that, that the water meters would need to be replaced because that was the driving factor because we couldn't find any other other issue um, associated with the water loss. So um, as it turns out, we did find uh, the, what we believe was the smoking gun over in the, the athletic fields that we talked about before. Mm -hmm. um, so there was about $720,000 that was associated with um, uh, the water meters. Um, we also, uh, the second reason, we also uh, have uh, fewer lead lines than we expected for a city our age. So that, that's going to save us about $200,000 that we're estimating. Um, the gate valve, which we just talked a little bit about, uh, we had estimated that, I think we were doing 162 of them as part of the project. And we estimated that half of those would be 
replacements and half of those would be refurbishments. Refurbishments to date, we've only done refurbishments. Uh, so that's actually been good news because the refurbishments are six times cheaper. Uh, that's about another $300,000. The fourth uh, uh, reason is we've received significant grants of about $300,000. And then the other uh, big reason uh, for, for the surplus um, is that uh, when we had put together the, the, the approved recommendation, uh, Eagle's requirement was that every home in the city have a front front uh, lawn excavation to visually identify the water line material going into and out of the stop box. Um, after we had approved the project, they had uh, changed their, their guideline to um, doing a statistically balanced sample. And for our city, it was 315. So um, that reduction uh, saved us another $750,000. So to date, we have not spent any money out of the water fund that we had we had planned on doing, and we don't plan on touching that 1.9 million. So we're planning on essentially giving that back to the city, and the city in the future can then figure out the city and this council um, can figure out what they want to do with that money. But when you when you compare the uh, amounts that we've spent to the uh, 5.4 million dollar bond that we we took out, um, we are 675 thousand dollars. We have 675 thousand dollars left after accounting for all the work that will be done through the end of this third third year of the project. Um, so the the when the recommendation was made, we anticipated this as a possibility. We have an endless supply of of uh, uh, water projects, as Council Miller, Council Member Miller just you know noted about the water mains. So um, the study group talk through possible uses for this $675,000. And, and also I should note that the expectation for a general obligation bond is that the money is used up within three years, which will be this summer. Um, so all of our systems through this capital improvement bond have been significantly improved. The one area though that still has uh, a long way to go is the, the water mains. Um, so the study group is recommending that in addition to the water main replacements that are already slated for 2023, that we add two water main projects to that, uh, to the summer of 2023, uh, to the summer of 2023 project. Um, and those uh, recommendations are San Diego from uh, Rackham to Stan Stanford Court, and then Lincoln uh, underneath Southfield Road. So that'll improve uh, fire uh, flow, fire safety, and redundancy to those areas. Um, Lincoln does require a little bit of background information on that one specifically. So about 15 years ago, there was a water main break under Lincoln, and given the technology at the time, the only way to fix that would have been to dig up Southfield Road. And so at the time, the, the administration decided to shut off those gate valves, which prevented water from going from the east side of Lincoln over to the east side of Southfield Road to the west side of Southfield Road, eliminating the redundancy and causing some of the um, you know, reduce flow and pressure in, in that area. So now, 15 years later, there's technology that will allow us to repair that via either a current pipe placing or directional boring, um, which in which case we won't have to dig up Southfield Road. And so, if you add up the two costs for the San Diego uh, option and the Lincoln option, and you, you uh, add those together, it's about 687,000. We've got 675,000 left. So there are two different contingencies for that slight $12,000 overage. Um, one is that we do expect that a large majority of our gate valves in the 2023 project will still require refurbishment instead of replacement. So there should be significant savings there. And if that doesn't happen, um, again, we, we return, we're essentially returning $1.9 million to the water and sewer fund that we're not going to use as part of this project. So that $12,000 can easily be absorbed by the 1.9 million. Thank you. Good question. Why don't we have 860,000 if we're not doing the water meter replacements? Because 100, 100, well, we need the motion first, right? Oh. Yeah, so, um, I'll make a motion to uh, adopt the recommendation and instruct the city administrator to add these two water main projects to the 2023 capital improvement project. There a second. Second. Where is the motion? Oh, so thank you. Um, <laughs> moved and seconded. Um, now. Yeah, so, so to your question, um, th there was $860,000 budgeted for, for um, water, water improvements. Oh, uh, water meter replacements. Um, 
40,000 of that was for water meter replacements, 120,000 of that was for uh, water, to water telemetry technology, and that's what we approved. Um, and the RFP was supposed to go out and it hasn't yet. So, no. Is that the thing that's going to leave? Yes. yes. That hasn't gone out yet? That hasn't gone out. Hmm. Any further questions? So is this like a document that's subject to change at all, or you just should I mean, we're, we're recommending that those two projects get added to the summer of 2023. And is this that it's not on here, but is it right about here? It's right down. Right at the corner. So okay. it's, it's just it's just underneath it goes underneath the road. Underneath at Lincoln. Top of the road. That section underneath top of the road, there's a break underneath there. So they so they shut the valve off over here, so no water's flowing that way. Gotcha. And so that'll increase redundancy, not only redundancy, but also flow to that whole area over there. Good. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah, it's pretty much an alley Yeah, alley Yeah, so here, here, yeah, so you do that piece underneath Hearing none, roll call, please. Council Member Canoes? Yes. Council Member Miller? No. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Council Member Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Canton? Yes. Motion carried. Next, we will have the action from the labor attorney's recommendation. I want to make a motion or yeah, make a motion on that. Thank you, Scott. Yes. So I'll um, make a motion to deny the grievance filed by Glennis Thornhill because of because denial of her application for promotion to deputy treasurer was not due to age discrimination and there was no violation of Article 19.03 of the city's personnel manual of employment regulations. The city council finds that the promotion of another candidate was based on legitimate business reasons. The administration's assessment that the successful applicant had more job-related experience for the deputy treasurer position than Mrs. Thornhill, Ms. Thornhill. Is there a second? Second. Um, I don't believe there's any discussion behind it. Um, roll call, please. Council Member Miller? No. Mayor Garrett? Yes. Council Member Jennings? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor? Yes. Council Member Canez? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And next we have the appointment to Board of Reviews. Um, I just realized that there's not really a. <laughs> introduction of it, it's just the application. So if somebody wants to introduce it. I could probably introduce it. Um, we had a board of review member that's term was up and we're in need of replacing that board of member. And so you receive three applicants from um, three different people. And um, I don't have their names in front of me, but, um, and um, we asked that the mayor appoint one of those board of review members. I do have a board of review mem uh, meeting on Thursday, which we are going to be short mm -hmm. for because um, this is being um, voted on so late. Uh, we were hoping it would be in February that this um, new board of member is not gonna be able to make it to the board of review. And we also have one of our others and we have three board of review members. So I'm only gonna have one. So I'm gonna have to call our assessor and find out what we need to do with that. So, but we do need to have somebody appointed. So we at least have two board members. Do you not have an alternate? Hmm? Do you not have an alternate any longer? No, we haven't had an alternate. The last alternate, alternate was Frank Bracken. It's, it's been a while. But... And his, yeah, it was Frank Bracken, his term ended. And we haven't had a, a, any applications come through that have been, uh, or that have been, um, I don't know how to, So um, for the, the item for tonight is to appoint, the recommendation is to appoint Yolanda Arnold to the Board of Review with the term expiring 12-31-2026. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to appoint Yolanda Arnold to the Board of Review uh, for the term expiring December 31st, 2026. There's a second. Second. Moved and second. Is there any discussion? 
Yes. How how is the decision made? Because we have three different applicants that look like they have a variety of experience. How how is a person chosen? Um, it comes to me for a recommendation. I make the recommendation. The council council approves it or denies. I understand that, but how do you make your recommendation? What, I, what do you use to determine that? By reading what their uh, what they fill out the application with by the listing their relevant information regarding your past or present employment experience, memberships, or personal experiences that they relate to you being qualified for the items checked above. Also list any other relevant information that clearly takes your qualifications or serving on committees or boards checked above. So I go back there. Okay, is there a ranking system that what what kind of experience is is required for this position? Well, in this in this particular case, the, the the recommended candidate has real estate experience and homeowners association experience. The the other two candidates, their experience listed was being residents and college graduates. Oh, and, okay. But, but but that was a negative at one point about legacy appointments was a, was an issue. So I'm just. Uh, what do you mean by legacy appointments? Uh, well, so it was with planning commission in an uh, effort to get rid of legacy appointments and to bring different people on who hadn't been involved in other things, apparently. I have no idea of what you mean by that. So, uh, <laughs> is there any other questions? Concerns? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mayor Garrett. Yes. Council Member Jennings. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Canton. Yes. Council Member Kinez. I was looking for the application. Sorry. Oh, go up to the Oh, I got them, but I don't. Yeah, think they're, they're going to be towards the oh, front. Yeah. I found them. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It was Marvin Moore, Mike Russo, the, um... Both. So this one didn't have. Strategic planning experience. What, what's the term? So we're still in the vault part. So then we have to put uh, up the, that. Oh, what is that? Since we're in the middle of a motion. So the, the point for discussion has closed. I think if, oh, if there's sorry. additional discussion, the uh, if the motion fails, it can be, it can be re reintroduced. It can be additional discussion, or um, if the mayor wants, we could entertain additional questions at this point, <laughs> rather than going through that whole process. It's on the ends um, in 2026. I'm sorry, I was looking for the papers. I apologize. And just maybe well, a little background. Get those on, on what I would like, yeah, the I would get them until today. Yes. Just, uh, so the board of review, when when a property owner has a uh, receives their notice of assessment, they have the opportunity to to challenge or contest what the county has assessed their property value at. So they would appear before this board of review. The board of view, review would hear their their contention or their, their issues with their their proposed assessment for this year. And then in conjunction with the county uh, county equalization department who handles the assessing for the city will respond and make a determination as to whether or not to grant the relief requested by the homeowner or deny that relief requested. Appearance at the um, blank. <laughs> appearance before this board uh, is, is a required step in, in order to be able to uh, pursue a appeal before the Michigan tax tribunal. You have to go to the board of review first in order to be able to pursue that if you're a residential property owner. So, so it's a uh, an individual that's going to, your ideal candidate is going to be someone that familiar uh, with real estate, maybe have some information or, or background on equalization or valuate, valuation, valuation uh, of property. Um, but really, primarily, they're going to rely upon that assessor 
uh, that sits in with them on that and making that determination. Mm -hmm. it's, and not a, it's not an emotional based appeal. It's a, there has to be some sort of um, I'll substantial. Use it. Yeah, well, or you know, if your property was was zoned was uh, zoned for residential, but it was assessed as industrial or commercial or something, uh, an error along those lines, then that could be corrected. Um, or the cap was taken off the property and shouldn't be taken off. Correct. Um, yeah. It also they do hear hardship cases too, or poverty cases. And there so. there are standards and thresholds for the for the hardship. Yep. Uh, that if the individual provides, you know, demonstrates a financial need or financial difficulty, they qualify based on those standards. That's the role of the board review. And how often do they meet? Once a year. Oh, that's three it. Three days. No, right? they meet two days in March, once one in July, and one in December. So four. But um, the March boards are two, they're a full day. So you have from eight till five during the day, and then you have an afternoon session till nine o'clock at night. So, and the first one is this Thursday, and the next one is the following Thursday. So, so, so they would be at the meeting on Thursday. Correct. But I don't know if we're so, going to have enough uh, enough, enough people or board members for Thursday. So we'll have to see if they're going to have to push to another day. Okay. How many yeah. people are on that board? Three. Three. And we have a quorum with two. Any other questions? No, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. We'll still with uh, you, council, woman, and that. Oh, you got to me already? Yep. Um, yes. Thank you. Council Member Miller? Yes. Motion carried. Yes. Oh, I never got the vote. <laughs> <laughs> We're approaching Kent, I think. Yeah. Okay. Next, the city administrator report. Do you have anything from? I just have one thing from our um, code enforcement officer. Um, he just wanted to let everybody know that Fontenot is done for today, but they will be back out each day until they have gone through the city once, chipping and hauling per their contract. Um, Big Dave's is done for the day. They have been working, getting the hazardous branches and fallen trees taken care of first. In some cases, they only did cuts to remove the hazardous and clear sidewalks and streets. They will be back out tomorrow and continue so until the city is complete. They will haul out anything that Fontenot does not. Does not. There will be no yard waste bags being picked up until April 3rd. All bags or cans that have yard waste must be pulled back from the street until, the, until that time. Um, we have multiple trees and branches down throughout the city because of the storms. And they, uh, we are asking um, the residents to please be patient as we do the cleanup for this. And that's the only thing I have. And then um, we also, the city administrator did send out today to everybody the follow-up to the question we had at our last meeting. And um, we are knocking those off as soon as we can, or as soon as we can get a hold of some of the people. Some of them we did not have phone numbers for to be able to call them. So um, we have had people knocking on their doors to talk to them. So, okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. Yep. City attorney. Uh, nothing for me tonight. Um, infrastructure study group. Uh, yeah, so obviously we, uh, the, the, the group met to uh, put together the recommendation that was approved uh, to or adopted tonight uh, by council. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention from, from that meeting, because it's, it's just continued good news, is that our, our water loss rate is at 3% for this past month, so that's now three months in a row uh, where we've been 3% or less. So again, uh, continuing to keep our fingers crossed that the smoking gun uh, that we were looking for has been found and and hopefully our water loss rates will will be at, at a low rate from here on forward. That's it? Yep. Thank you. Parks and Rec Committee. I want to uh, jump in here. Um, uh, Fire yes. is going to, uh, it's putting, we are having breakfast with breakfast and or no, or lunch. <laughs> <laughs> breakfast with the, I keep saying breakfast with the bunny or lunch. Um, so brunch. We're going to go brunch with the bunny. Um, we are, or Barb is now, let's go ahead. <laughs> Since you're looking yes. For so Barb. we're, we're going to try for um, March 25th. 
or what was the second date? April. April 2nd, which is a Sunday, right? Yes. So we're going to try for one of those two dates. We are definitely going to go ahead with it. We just have to find um, which, um, which is going to work best for the committee for cleanup and which will be attracting more children. That's what we really want. Right. So it's going to be 325 or, and we'll have that date out. It'll, it'll be posted as soon as possible. As soon we as we really know that by this evening. Sure. Oh, yeah, should we? I, think so. yeah. oh, well, I have to wait for the person think. that I need to talk to. Oh, well, probably the 25th is because there is another event that happens like two hours after the, out, the time of the breakfast with the bunny. We just have to make sure that we are able to turn the room around for our next event. Out. And I think that's doable because they leave to go out in the back and look for eggs. So it's actually, we'd even be out of the room sooner than that, right? Possibly. If we make sure it's over after they go out. Yeah, it's one way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we do have uh, another bingo coming up on March 16th. It's going to be a St. Patrick's Eve. We're going to do a potluck. So we will provide corned beef, and then we ask uh, residents to bring a dish to pass. They can sign up, um, and then we'll do a St. Patrick's Day bingo. What time? Yeah, that's, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what have we been doing? Six to eight? Mm -hmm. Yeah, six to eight. Six to eight p.m. But this will be Thursday, not Friday, oh. for March. So it's for, oh, because now you don't want to, um, I get it. Yes, I don't, <laughs> I think people want to. <laughs> do their own thing on St. Patrick's Day. Sure. <laughs> and then we're hoping we do have one um, activity per month and I'm hoping other council members, if you wanna take a night and tell me what you wanna do, I'll be happy to help you run with it. Absolutely. And then we'll put those dates out. Yeah, thanks for doing all this. Yep. Thank sure. you. Um, planning Commission. Yeah, so at our, our last meeting, um, Planning Commission adopted updated rubbish standards. Um, basically, there were two things that were done. One is that we changed the zoning language um, that says the, the keyword from shall to may with respect to having a uh, requiring a, um, a fire safe room uh, to store trash. Um, so that that's now optional instead of a requirement. And then in addition, um, with respect to uh, garbage cans that are used by the businesses, um, we, we added that they needed to be covered and that they needed to be out of public view, stored out of public view. And that was it. Thank you. Some card. Question, did you do anything about the recycling? No, there wouldn't touch the recycling. That'll be, that will be on the agenda council to officially adopt, right? Correct. Um, the, the meeting on yeah. Some guy, um no report. I'm reading some guy. I'm saying it, but anyway. Mm -hmm. Southfield Public Schools. Uh they uh, Southfield Public Schools has launched their celebrity readers program and they have uh, opportunities where you can actually go online and um register to read and that kind of thing. So it looks like kind of a cool way to do it. And I think it's expanding beyond beyond just the month of um whatever reading month. Um, so anyway, um, people have been invited, but I would imagine that if you're interested in volunteering, that you can also reach out and, um, you know, sign up to to read in one of the classrooms in one of the district buildings. I have to finish signing up. I was invited. Picking a day. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Sakura, Sakwa minutes. I'm assuming that's going to be from soon. So. They're in the packet. They're in the packet. Yeah. No, I mean, the top. Oh, correct. Okay. Two bowls. So, um, for unfinished and new business, um, I <laughs> asked um, the city manager to put the communication plan in the package. So, one, it stays in front of us. But my, my idea was to kind of start drafting something because I think that what we need, especially from um, the storms that just happened, we need to have like a call tree or some type of um, emergency plan that's written out that's clear for all the residents, you know, to know how this works or how, you know, what happens during the storm. So anyway, I was just saying all that, if at, at some point 
I'm hoping that we as a council can also start um, thinking about after looking at these examples, thinking about a communications plan um, that we can kind of talk about maybe in a study session or something, because we definitely need to start drafting one. So that's why it's in there, just for your review. Next, we um, public comment. Anyone want to talk about any anything that's on your mind for approximately three minutes? Mm -hmm. Anyone online or in the audience for three minutes? I don't see any hands, so I will close the public comment and we will go to mayor and council comments. Breakfast with the bunnies, we do that. Um, one, I really want to thank um, DPW for um, their hard work during the storm. They did majorly overtime um, for actually both storms. And uh, so I, I want to make sure that if you see them out, maybe thumbs up. I do have a question. I did send some um, photos over to Sue because there are um, city trees that I drove around after the storms to see what trees that we need to take care of. And there's some trees that's hanging over like the roads where just like if the next storm comes through, it's gonna be in the middle of the road. So tree program. But that is actually, I was on that list to Bill Simon okay. for enforcement. He is working, I know he went he went out today and was uh, driving around discussing um, tree damage uh, for city tree, you know, for everything really. Um, I know he was here uh, yesterday as well, and he is working through making, you know, making sure he's got all of those identified to make sure that we're going to help him out. Um, he and I have talked about moving forward the tree program. Um, so I, I'm hoping we'll have, and then still have something to have along to steal the tree with inspiration and then come in the week and I'll be in the I don't know what we're trying to do. And he's also working with Dave's tree service to get pick up the trees for the city properties. I mean, it's, it's not a uh, emergency, what I'm saying, but some of the trees that yeah. I saw, mm -hmm. like there's a big one that's hanging over Santa Barbara, and it seems like it's getting lower and lower, <laughs> yeah. and it's a, it's a nice size. Oh, so okay. that's one he's issue. That list. And yes. My guess is that he probably, if that one, he probably thought, but I'm sure he was It's not, good. it's just where you, you stop and look at it, it's like, you know, Maybe two good storms come through. Right, the days to turned back. Okay. As long as we're talking trees, can I jump mm -hmm. in here for a second? So I, I talked to a few residents recently, and one one idea that that surfaced, given that we're a tree city and we have a ton of problems with trees, and you know, if you ever go on Villagers with a Village Voice, you know, there's always, you know, who can I get to to you know cut this tree or trim this tree or take care of this issue? One thing that we floated as, as a possible idea is, is, there, is there any way that the city might be able to arrange for some type of con, you know group discount for the city so that any resident who has uh, a tree issue can call that preferred vendor and get a discounted rate towards towards their, their kind of similar to what we've done with the um uh, the the water lines and sewer lines you know the home home lines where we have a you know insurance that we kind of partnered with. It's a little bit different, but I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can do something like that to help the residents get a discounted rate to maintain their trees so that right. we don't have these these issues all the time or less of these issues. I, I know I'm, the, the question is going to pose a similar concept to the question posed about, you know, for residents to uh, purchase trees. I haven't heard of a program quite like that where you know, but I'll certainly chit chat with um, with Bill about it. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like a, a great idea because I mean, you know, I mean, we've all had issues with, with trees in our homes, and there is this right. like a contractor. I don't know. So, I, you know, to be able to have um, you know a solid contractor that you can rely on for good rates. Yeah, I'll I'm chat with Bill about it and see if he's um, one if he's ever heard of a program like this, or you know how we can 
get it started. Get it started. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I would, yeah. I would think if I was a tree vendor, this that would be a really great thing to have a contract like that, and maybe we could put out an RFP and have multiple, you know, uh, uh, vendors apply, and whichever one provides the greatest discount for, you know, a, a, a la carte, you know, type of service list of services, you know, we go with that particular vendor, and that way it's fair. Are you, I know Roger Lynn has been working on these things for a couple of years. Are you including him in this? I know there were only two people on the tree committee, so. I wasn't going to name names, but yeah, Roger's who I've been talking to about, about getting started Roger and Tree. So yeah, um, certainly I, I've been chatting with, chatting with Roger on a, on a pretty, fairly regular basis on, on the tree projects, but. Because um, there was a program through the county, I believe. Has anything happened with that? Um, there's no county program I'm aware of. I mean, it may have been something that happened before. I know Roger and I have talked about. No, it was something that was supposed to be happening in April. There was going to be a discount that it was it was put out. I'll, I'll, I'll find some more info on it. I'm not aware of that particular um, program, but that I'm certainly wouldn't put it past the county, right? Um, and then the, go ahead. You have something else about trees? <laughs> I had a question. Do you know, I've seen a lot of residents with their, like, their personal trees that have, you know, fallen down. Do you know, like, Bill's been going out to, like, at least check on them and see if they have, you know, like, you know, maybe somebody's elderly or something? And... I I know that Bill has had conversations with some residents about trees that have fallen, um, you know, not um, private, private, you know, yeah. private trees. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's actively going out and, and speaking those conversations or see, mm -hmm. you know, like he notices that I don't know if he's necessarily going and having those conversations. I know we've had a few conversations with residents who called or stopped by. Um, but I think right now his primary focus is on the street. street. And do we have any resources available for people who aren't able to pay for that kind of thing? I don't have any personal resources, but um, I, again, I don't know. Um, I don't know if Bill's got any information that he's been providing. I, I'm so I'm assuming. I, I don't necessarily think so, but I haven't been too involved in that particular kind of thing. Okay. And if anybody, any residents have logs that they're looking to get rid of, Back by the gazebo, the, the the city is looking for as much firewood as we can get. Uh, yeah, that way, back easy. that way, within <laughs> reason. Yeah, within reason, within reason. Um, uh, just it's the Oakland uh, Conservation District. That's who does the annual tree sales. You could order them through uh, Oakland Conservation District. They generally offer bulk, like seedlings at a discount, or you can buy. I've bought them. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, but they're little. They have I, the big tree. Yeah, yeah. no, they're these <laughs> slightly larger ones, but they're they're usually you save most of the money if you buy small ones. But okay. It's the end of April every year they do it. You can pre-order them and then you pick them up. And... Like bigger than this? I mean, like I bought like two hundred and fifty, I think, pine trees. It might have been about that big. So <laughs> bigger than a little now. bit bigger than. That. Actually, some of them. This is about ten years ago. They're over ten years old. Yeah, but once they root, yeah, they're done. <laughs> Um, I just have a quick, are any of our residents still without power? Do we know? Yes. Oh, there are. There were some people the last that um, I looked. Um, yeah. And where would they be just scattered or is there one block where they're still out or? That part, I don't know. Okay. Um, but I will say that it, um, I saw some, some things on the villager. If you have lines down that you're concerned about to send me your address, um, and I can see what I can do about getting somebody out there as soon as possible. And then for me, the last thing for my part, <laughs> you know, we've all hijacked yeah, it. I know. So, um, is that we had really a great, I thought it was a good conversation when we had, um, uh, at Jagged Fork with the South Oakland's Mayor's Association. And so we decided to expand it for, um, the community. So we have a diversity, equity, and inclusion event that is going to be here Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the theater, um, in, the, <laughs> in the community room. Um, and we're working on it, uh, whether or not it'll be uh, recorded 
or streamed on it, streamed on Facebook. I don't want to be yelled at from the guy in the sky. So we'll see what happens. So that is the guy in the sky is Joe, not yeah. guy. But anyway, <laughs> so um, that's all that I have for my notes. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, council? Questions? Concerns? I mean, well, I'll go. I thought everybody's. Yeah, go, go. Um, so I, I don't have much to say, but I did want to say thank you to Barb. Uh, she's been doing a great job with putting on the events um, in the city. I want to say thank you, Kelly, for all of your updates for when the power went out. Um, thank you to your, you know, your contacts and everything. Um, and then also, I just wanted to thank the residents who came out to my um, thank you. office hours. Office hour. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, we had a great conversation, and we are working on your concerns. And thank you. That's all. Oh, I, I can hijack this now. Something happened on the Susan. Um, hijacking yours. If there's another council person ready to uh, do their office hours, so please tell. The city manager. That would be um, next month, right? Be you're trying to do month. one a month? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you saying someone is ready or are you saying no. if, if someone, if someone, if someone oh, is okay. ready? Which I kind of can't skip it, but anyway, I'm sorry. Go back. I didn't want to hijack your time. Oh, no, that's Mike. all I have. Thank you. Um, and hopefully everyone's power comes back on. Um, so, so that's ridiculous. But. Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, feel bad for all the residents that have had lost power. I'm assuming there are going to be a lot of consequences from all of the things that happened. Some people were out for, I mean, I was out for four days. A lot of people were out for longer. Some are still out. So if there's anything that we can do as a city to offer resources in any way to help with you know whatever unforeseen consequences people might be facing, I think that would be great. And also, I know there were conversations with DTE in the past. Um, I think that there needs to be some kind of conversation with them again. Um, they spent a lot of time trimming trees in the last year or two here, and um, this was one of the worst things that we've ever had. So I don't understand you know, I don't, I don't think it's the tree trimming that is uh, impacting this. So um, you know, I think we, that we need to have some kind of conversation to see what's going on in Lathrop with our, with our electricity. I know it, it impacted a lot of people across the state, but um, like I said, they have spent a lot of time here supposedly making a difference and it has not, so. Anything further? That's it. No. Anyone else? Yep. Um, so I just wanted to check in and see if is, is there been any moving forward at all with the encroachment discussion. Or we just, I just want to make sure that that's staying alive. I know we were kind of waiting for Bill to get up to speed a little bit. Bill and I have been working on, um, we've been working through that together, uh, making sure that he's getting the, the guidance and training he needs on just in general to say that that is something um, that we, he and I have started talking about. Um, uh, we started very, you know, kind of as we're out in the field doing things, identifying your, your Keep it a database. That you, could, you know, we're just kind of starting our own little pile, if you will, of, of, of properties and, and, and sort of series and sort of that we've been to talk about. So I'm um, still a little ways out from being able to bring information and we really want to have a good amount of data and information collected um so that when we're you know coming for council to talk about and actually have a good discussion so um not definitely not a, a dead conversation but there's quite a bit of information to gather okay and scott is there any um update on the uh reach from the uh closed session i have not heard anything from the attorney general's office okay um, all right, and then just the last thing, um, at our last meeting, uh, both in the study session and in the um, 
uh, council meeting, there were some figures thrown out and I, I, I knew that they were not correct, but I didn't want to say anything until I had the, the particular numbers. So um, there were there were talks about, you know, what one point seven million dollars of, of uh, engineering fees for Gibbles and Webster and uh, went back and looked and, and that was a pretty big inflation. It's, it's just a little over. And this is with respect to the, the, the two uh, three year projects that we have going on. Um, their engineering fees are about one million dollars. They are actually um, thirteen, almost fourteen percent under budget on their their engineering fees. And when you look at it as a percentage of the total project, um, it's about nine point four percent of the overall spend. Um, MDOT looks at at uh, fifteen to twenty five percent of engineering fees for their projects. Uh, industry standards are about five to seven percent for design and ten to fifteen percent. For construction, so that's a total of 15 to 22 percent. So again, below that, and, and if you look online uh, for for guidelines, the, the most conservative uh, estimates that I could find were under 15 percent, and we are well under 15 percent. So um, I just wanted to correct that number, and and you know, Gibbles and Webster is doing a good job of managing the engineering fees for uh, these two very large projects. Well, I do need to respond to that because that's something I asked for in the um, infrastructure FOIA that I filed back in March of 2022, and I never received it. So I actually went through the check registers and added up what we have paid to Giffels Webster, and that was for a two-year period, and it was 1.7 million. So, but that would that's be, where that, that amount came from. Right, but that would that wouldn't be for those the, the two projects. That would be well. For it all, was pretty close. All over. projects that we do with Gimbals, including planning commission. Well, right, but that's not commission. that's not a whole that's not a whole lot in the in the big scheme of things. So yeah. again, if if I had received the information that I asked for, you know, I wouldn't have had to estimate or spend all that time going through each check that was written. So that's all I. Have. All right. Well, then I would take the motion to adjourn. Right. Second. To adjourn. Second. Adjourn. Have a great night. Mm -hmm.